Carol here, a warm welcome to my craft room. And it's my birthday today, 64 years old, and I'm feeling great. And I wanted to put this tutorial up because it's a birthday card. Remember I said I was going to take that Pink Fresh Studio stamp that I did my last card with, and I was going to do a rather simplistic card that looked very, uh, I don't know, just stunningly beautiful, I think. Uh, when it turned out, I was amazed. And these paints, these metallic paints are from Michaels. They're under $10 with your coupon. And I tell you what, they are comparable to me when I'm using the Kuretake or any other higher end paints. And then you take this for under $10. I don't think you're going to be able to tell the difference. It's creamy. It's vibrant when you heat set it and you put another layer on, you know, most inexpensive paints, any kind of paints, what happens is they don't have enough pigment. They have filler, but this seems to have quite a bit of pigment in it. And I, I really am going to use this a lot more in my uh, craft videos because especially mixed media, and things where you need to use a bountiful amount of uh, paint, I think this would stand the test of time. And I think you are going to absolutely love it. So with this um, last video that I did, thank you so much. So many went to view it. I'm very thankful for the inlay embossed, uh, embedded embossed technique. Uh, I'll put it up at the end of this tutorial. And remember that I am, I, did some embossing. I did the one for the set on black and white embossing powder, but this one I did with gold embossing powder. I did one with clear and one with white. And I absolutely have fallen head over heels with these wonderful metallic paints. Um, I don't put anything up that I don't feel is um, going to stand the test of time for anything. And I saw them over on my uh, spin about over there on top of my Karatake, the new um, ones that the metallics and that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to see what these are like. I can't remember. Yes. Fantastic. So once I put all the golds down that you see, I think I used the gold um, yellow, the green. I decided to take that light green, the one that's under the moss green there, and I took some of the pearlescent, the far left, and I mixed it together with quite a bit of water, and I put it just for a background. I knew I was going to cut it fairly close to the sides, so uh, I was more concerned with just putting a touch of it in the middle than I was with the outside. But, you know, like everything, I was experimenting. And another thing I like about it, it has, they have a deep well. So when you're accumulating water, you're not going to lose the water all over the place. You can see how clean this is. And it's not because I haven't used it, I have. And I think this would be wonderful for splatter painting. Because I did do some of it. You'll see how I did it later on in the card tutorial. And it really was fantastic. They dry true to the color that you see on the palette. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? I didn't have any product set out for this. I was just going with it. And I remembered these, uh, I think they're from Simon Says Stamp, the 6x6 six six glitter paper. And look at that one. It's kind, it's kind of like a coffee bean. That's what it reminds me of. But look at how it matched that beautiful pearlescent uh, color there on that flower, the first one on the right. I, it was stunning. And then I thought, well, I have one of those sheets that's a gold that pretty well matches the gold uh, pearlescent paint on the flowers as well. This took me in total, to make this entire card, I think was 35 minutes. The edit was longer because I had to get up and find this and get this and yada yada. You know, you're thinking up your plan, kind of your plan in action. But it was literally a quick easy but yet it had such a stunning appeal to this card that I couldn't wait to get it up for you. So I thought okay maybe I could leave it plain on an A2 you know but as I cut it down I thought no I want the, these flowers to really pop off the page 
And to do that, I think, is when you put something um, that's catty, is it catty wonkus? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, kind of kitty wonkus? Catty? Kitty or catty? <laughs> I'm looking at a catty, so it's probably kitty. <laughs> kitty wonkus. <laughs> but anyway, it's crooked. How's that? Forget those big words we're I'm trying to think of there. It's crooked. I want to make a crooked card. So I get out the two colors that really seem to pop off the, the page here. See what I mean? Look at that. Oh. And then you have the gold over there. So yeah, I was going back and forth, putting it up to the light, putting it down from the light. Uh, I don't know if the light was going to talk to me and, you know, kind of twinkle off and on if that was the one to do. <laughs> I don't think so, but I decided on that beautiful coffee bean color. That's all I could think of, that rich, rich chocolate yumminess. And then I haven't used this, um, I'm going to get it for you here. It's the Tim Holtz. It's the Ranger Stack Deco. It has five dyes in here. I got this over in Buffalo at Hobby Lobby, and I was thrilled to get it because it looks like you've actually tore the pages, but in a nice way, if that makes sense. And I didn't have to take much of the die cut off, but I do want to take the guts out of this chocolate uh, glitter paper. And something about this Simon Says Stamp glitter paper is like the last glitter paper I used. It doesn't come off in your hands. It doesn't, you know, uh, it stays right on there, glitters, but it doesn't seem like glitter paper. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. And generally, if I have a really nice paper I want to keep in my stash, I'll take the guts out of the center and use the outsides of it. And then I grabbed my, I had another project I'm working on, and this LDRS Creative die that says smile with the flowers attached to the die, oh, it was stunning. I, I die cut three of them for my other project, so I just went over and said, okay, I'm going to borrow you and I'll... I'll cut it out again later. And that's wonderful about doing this card why it didn't take so long is because I already uh, embossed in gold my stamp, so that didn't take long. Then I already had this beautiful LDRS creative die that says smile, and you're not going to believe the sales going on. I will leave a link in my blog. You just have to wait a little while. I always tell you that because things happen. I don't get to my blog right away, but I try to within 45 minutes to get all the supplies listed for you. Now I'm going to see if I can adequately uh, kitty wonkus, catty wonkus. Boy, I got to look that one up. Um, make it crooked and not see out of the you know what I die cut out of that center piece out of that center page. And it worked, oh, like perfectly. Yeah, perfect, as Popeye would say. And so now I need to die cut with a bigger, uh, the largest of the dies. There's five dies. This is the larger of them. Probably made for an A2 card to be pretty exact. And then the one down from that is what I took the guts out of the um, Simon Says Stamp Glitter 6x6 paper. And then the the outside to that, I kept it because I thought, wow, if I make the crooked going left and then I make the frame around it going right, it is so crazy pleasing to the eye. It's crazy. I just kept, the reason why I know it's pleasing to the eyes is because my eyes were really pleased with the outcome. <laughs> yeah, my explanations for why I like certain things are crazy, but... Uh, this was just the beauty of making a card like this. And when you have supplies around your craft room that you decided to do an extra one of this, extra one of that, then you just get to go grab those supplies and quickly make a, a birthday card. And uh, I really was surprised because generally, you know me, it takes me days. I just seem to work on a card forever. And this one was just over half an hour. And I have to say, because some of the product was already uh, completed for me. It was just resting off to the side having a nap. So here we go. I put the liquid glue on it but also scotch tape. I'm going to tape the back. I don't want anything to happen to that and then I'm going to add foam to it so it really is going to be secure 
And then I put this flat. So on the Simon Says Stamp Glitter Paper, the actual floral die cut is flat. And so I'm not raising up this piece either. I just used my Nouveau glue. That seems to work and it was close by. And I apologize for my light shine there. I didn't have my full mat on the Ranger mat. So the glare was, you know, coming off of that light. But uh, I'm trying to just focus on the card here. And oh my, I, I don't have a problem with things, I guess because I like mixed media. This uh, crookedness and all that stuff, I love it. It blends itself with doing uh, vintage style anything, shabby chic anything. Your eye does not mind things being straight on. And that makes a card even more relaxing because you're not having to measure anything, in my opinion. So here I'm just setting it and patting it and just having fun with it and loving it. Loving the process of it very much. I hope you do. I'm giving you a close-up. I'm telling you, like five minutes to color in those flowers with that beautiful metallic paint. And at Michael's, I was going to tell you, it's on the bottom shelf. I've seen it twice at two different Michael's. They're always on the bottom shelf where the um, paint supplies are. It's not up where you can see it. It seems to be on a shelf on the bottom. So here I'm going to cut the card straight. The only two things that are crooked are the first and second uh, parts of the frame, but this piece will be straight, and that makes it that's the beauty of making the design part of it really uh, pleasing, really nice. I can't say it enough, can I? I want to thank you for your wonderful comments too on my cards. I so enjoy a, I make a tea and I sit down and I go to my comments. And I just read them and read them and make sure that I answer each one separately because you're each separate people, right? Uh, as my grandson Hunter would say, uh, they're nice peoples. <laughs> yeah, and you're nice peoples. Thank you very much for all my happy birthday greetings today. Thank you very much. It just feels like a regular day to me. I'm uh, just, I guess, a little older, a little wiser, I hope. And I'm going to share, I want to share a few things on another video with you, with you that I've picked up uh, some products I think you're really going to like that are inexpensive, on sale, and I thought you'd like to see them. So I'll do that this week. We have the LDRS Creative Blog Hop coming up. Uh, for me, it's all next week, Monday to Friday, and my cards will come up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but everybody will be doing cards that week. So I hope you'll join me and there'll be lots of wonderful um, winnings there, yumminess. So anyway, on to this. Plus in June, I'm going to be designing a layout page, scrapbook page. I'm looking forward to that too. So here we go. Let's get on to this. I wanted a little edge of white, so I made my own card base. I think this ended up four and a half by five and a half. Um, I'll have to measure it. It's not far from me, but I'll keep talking and then I'll stop, take a break, and I'll tell you the exact measurement when I was finished the card. Whoop! There you go. <laughs> this is to remind me halfway through my video to say thank you to everybody that was so kind and left me wonderful birthday wishes. So that's why that was in there because I guess as I'm getting older, I am getting a little bit more forgetful on things. But my number one thing is not to be forgetful when it comes to giving thanks, right? And I do appreciate all the happy birthdays. It was great. It's nice to feel needed, isn't it? So, uh, and appreciated. I'll throw that in too. So here I'm making my own card base. All I do is cut around the edge of the design and then I make a bottom part with a half an inch extra on the bottom so that I can take it and uh, score it put some score tape and make my own card base. And this was beauteous. And the one thing that's nice about making a card that doesn't take a long time with a lot of elements is the it's only 32 minutes long. The exact time it took for me to create this in real life. So anywho, I had these beautiful um, sequins that matched identical. And I think I showed this on my last card, but it didn't match it. But look at Look, ah, every color I used on these metallic paints are in that sequin pack. And uh, I will share with you um, where that's from, just a second. 
It's the honeybee terracotta. I knew it was honeybee, but I didn't know the name of it. But it's the terracotta pack. And uh, if you have this set from Michael's uh, metallic paints and those beautiful sequins, you have a card, my friend, that's ready to be put together and uh, just, I don't know, It's it really is clean and simple it, because pff, I say that because I had everything at my feet. I didn't have to, um, well, no, they weren't at my feet. I didn't throw them on the floor. <laughs> why, am, why am I taking everything so literally, you know? Uh, but they were right beside me. And there's my half an inch fold that I took to my, um, uh, yeah, I put that there so that light didn't shine. And look, it, I put the paints on top and then light is shining through the, the uh, plastic on the acrylic or whatever it is that uh, the case is made for the paints. Isn't that funny? I think it's even shinier now that I did this. Yeah, I didn't notice it. If I had looked up there, oh. So I had to score. That wasn't to help out with the light. I just had to make my, my card base for the inside. Because of the weight on the front cover, I always say this, I don't want a light weight when you uh, open it up. I don't want the back side of the card to be lighter than the front. So here I had some of this um, felt. And it was really weird. All you had to do, you couldn't cut it all the way through, yet it was crazy thin. But all you did was cut it down, like score it down with your trimmer, and then peel it. And it would just peel to the exact line mark you made. And then I put it over and I penciled it in so that I could cut it again. This uh, came from a 10-pack that I got at the dollar store. And it doesn't have any sticky on either side. And it's so strange how it does that. It won't cut all the way through. But it's thin. I didn't get that. Even if I pressed down really hard. But it would tear uh, once you put the, the cut mark in it. And it took to my ATG gun. Look at that. You know how I said I filled my half inch here and my two quarter inch ones? I'm getting ready for that uh, layout for my scrapbooking page. <laughs> So I had to make sure, you always want to make sure after, you you don't want to make sure that you you did it right when you're doing a tutorial. You want to make sure you get it right before. So I practiced before I did this one. And here I'm taking off a bit of the foam. And because I did that and it didn't quite look so straight, I decided to distress it. And that just gave it a nice look in itself too. Everything wasn't straight. Uh, I like to add... Um, my distress tool to my cards anyway. Then I took my smile from LDRS Creative and I knew I was going to stack it because I wanted it to be four high. This is my number 12 uh, silver black velvet uh, brushes that I use. I love these. They're beautiful and it's nice and thick. I really do like using this for detail as well, the number 12. And what I do with this now, the smile I did not cut out. This is my 140 pound paper, so it did take to the water, but I had to be oh so careful. I I was thinking to myself here, yikes, when is it going to start to peel? But it didn't. It was great. So, and look at the terracotta um, sequins. Aren't they beautiful? All different sizes. There's even little flowers and that look identical to the flowers that's on this smile. LDRS Creative. And here I'm taking, I don't want to waste any of the paint, so I'm just dabbing it on with my finger and then I go over and instead of splattering my card, I touch it like that. See that? And I get all that goodness all around the outside of that die cut. Isn't that pretty? And honestly, it almost lines up on the bottom with the flowers, even though I made it crooked. It's wonderful. I love it. And, um, yeah, then I don't mind wiping this much up. This isn't too bad, right? And then I just kind of dab it because I knew I didn't want to heat set it anymore because I had that uh, felt on the back and I didn't want it to curl. Then I took my Stampin' Up! that sparkle glitter. I have it in a salt shaker. I haven't used this for 400 years. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get that out because the sparkle would just like with uh, uh, that metallic it would just, oh, it would just go together wonderfully. And see the flowers on the LDRS Creative die there? 
the flower in the terracotta sequence is identical. Identical. Uh, crazy, yeah, and it's a honeybee. I'm just showing you that. And look at that. There's the card. And then I just start putting on the sequins. And then I have to remember, I'm going to put smile on the front. Yeah, I just took a bunch. I get to use my little pick, my little pick stick thing. It worked wonderful. Just wonderful. I put the glue on and then I put that on. But uh, make sure that you either use your finger or see how the glue comes through there. Yikes. Yeah, I thought to myself, Carol, don't. you're not going to have any sticky on the end of your pick stick if you keep doing it this way. So I grabbed my pokey tool and, or my nail, whatever. I was trying, I don't know when I thought of it, but um, I kept thinking, no, don't unstick your sticky pick because you just got that one and make no wonder the last one didn't have any sticky on it. But I ended up taking the little flower, um, I put one, see it right there? Uh, I ended up putting another tiny little sequin on top. You can see that I doubled them up. And I like to have them, some point, if you use sequins, you know what I mean. Some I like pointed up and some I turned around so that it looked like it had a little lump bump in it. You know, that way you get to have two different styles to your sequins, I think. And here I decided to use, uh, excuse me, doesn't he walk by every time I'm using glue? <laughs> Oh yeah, so I'm grabbing my stash. I separated my glues, and this is the Zig um, two-way glue. It works great, but you have to kind of boink, 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 boink down on the counter or paper. See, you have to kind of smoosh it down. So you want to be careful on the opposite side if this is going to be your top piece. You don't care if you're going to put stuff on, you know, if you're going to stack them, who cares whether they're glued on the front and the back, because you need to do that anyway. So isn't that nice? Now that would look nice just white. I mean, you could get away with it, but it really does look stark there. I, I wanted it to blend. I wanted the whole card to blend. So I, that's why I did the white with the exact colors that I used in the metallic set. And the name of that metallic set, it's over on my roundabout thing there. I'll put it on my blog. The only name it comes with is the name that is embedded underneath the paint container but I think you really are going to love it and there you have it look at that it's four high so you get that beautiful white showing through I kind of ghosted it I pulled it across and here no get that off Carol I'm not going to use that no this is where I was yeah slowly disappeared it's gone I took out my um, score mat and I'm going to score come on where's the score tool there we go. I'm going to score around the edges. So all the way down, but only uh, like the far one to make it so it's just tiny around there, the score mark on the opposite side. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to move over, but I'm not going to touch the line. And then I'm going to do it the third time and not touch the next line. You can see what I mean right there. And I don't think there's a more beautiful finish on the inside of a card than to do this extra bit of detail that adds a slight, uh, I don't know, element that makes it look, it, it, may, it takes it to the next level to me by doing this. And then uh, put that page down and do your design on this page. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at, oh, I love, oh, I love doing that. I love scoring cardstock like this. It's beautiful. And so this is the piece that's going to go on to give my project some weight. Then I had to come back and this is all I did. Now you can tell how beautiful this paint is just by me swishing it across like this. Look at that. It, I mean, I didn't have to change up. Uh, on the bottom when I added a little bit more water because it was it's very, very um, thick, you know. And so you can only use a tiny bit and really take it a long distance by using a small amount. I heat set it on both sides so it didn't warp. I'm going to put that on with that flat felt. It's just gorgeous to me and I'm kind of cleaning up a little bit and then I'm going to get this sugar, uh, let me just see, so I, it is the sugar pea stamp happy birthday that came in Catherine Pooler's 
one of her uh, kits. And I must have set it over on the side, but it's, um, just a minute, I'll get that. Sorry, it's made by Sugar Pea Design. And it was in the kit. I grabbed my wonderful watermark uh, for the embossing and I put it down. It's happy birthday to you. I like it because it's cattywampus as well. And uh, when you see it, when I put the embossing powder on, it goes perfectly with the front. I love when that happens. I love when you go to your stash and you find a stamp sentiment that goes exactly with it. And I love this wow color. I wrote it down. You're going to see it. And I knew I was going to do this edit voiceover and I wouldn't remember to bring that. And you can't see it there, but I'll, I wrote it down for you. Yes. Happy birthday to anyone that's celebrating today. I want to make sure I say happy birthday to anyone out there that has a May 19th birthday. Happy birthday to you as well. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You have the stripes going one way. You have the sentiment just curving slightly. And I loved the color of it. Actually, it's right beside me, Carol. I didn't even think of that. It is called Wow Chocolate uh, chocolate caramel pearl. I'm pretty sure. I don't have the light on here while I'm doing this. Yes, it is. I saw it. It's so tiny. You can hardly see it. So I thought, okay, I'll just write it down and then everybody will see it. Okay, chalk let. And this is the new Nouveau pen, the script pen. So I, I get to try that out too, really quick. Yep. Um, don't look at the printing because it's not <laughs> the brush letter. I'm just practicing here. Yeah, no lines. I'm reading it, trying to read it. Yeah, chocolate care. Ah, yeah, Carol Mel. Yeah, there you go. Care. Um, oh, it's caramel milk. I don't think it's caramel milk. Is it? Oh, I gotta turn the light on here. This is real, folks. Let me see. It's chocolate caramel. It's not caramel. I must have been thinking of a chocolate bar, caramel chocolate bar. I'm sorry. It's caramel. Chocolate caramel pearl. So you have the beautiful paints that are pearlescent. And then you have your embossing powder that is chocolate caramel pearl. Yummy. Sounds good. My son brought me a happy birthday cake, my youngest son, and I can't wait to dig into it. But I don't eat desserts, but I'm you know, it's my birthday. I have to, right? So here you have it. <laughs> yeah, I told everybody I don't have to. I, I seldom eat desserts. Let me say that. But this cake really does look scrub delicious. So I am going to have it later on a piece anyway. I think the Happy Birthday to You by Sugar Pea Design is perfect for the front of this card. And like I said, I just, I love the layout of it. Just the swiping of the paint like that and that kind of uh, it's just not even right that happy birthday to you it's not straight it's not crooked look at that chocolate caramel <laughs> no it's caramel caramel then just wipe off any of the embossing powder that got in the grooves there well actually they're not grooves they're uh embossed there's the grooves on the other side but uh yeah i couldn't find my dollar store that where nothing's a dollar blush brush but I did find that beautiful brush that I have from L. It's from Clarity Stamp. I had to go back and look. <laughs> yeah, I haven't used them for a while, but it's from Clarity Stamp. It's beautiful. And here is that very thin uh, felt I got at the dollar store. I just ran some glue with my ATG half inch runner on one side and I'll do the same. It, you know, it didn't even affect my runner when I put these little pieces parts on it here, which was nice. Gave it the just the right lift onto the inside of my card. And uh, yeah, and nothing happened. My ATG actually worked. Remember I told you that I uh, filled, I had to fill all my ATG guns. I have two of the quarter inch, just in case I'm in a project and I need to grab another one. It runs out or something happens. I, always, I have another one because I got the one for $5 in a clearance bill, bin at Michael's one time. I couldn't believe it, like an ATG gun. So that's why I have two quarter inch ones. Here I'm stamping my wonderful stamp that says created especially for you from by Carol Held. And um, yeah, I put that on and I used my LDRS created ink that is the clear 
on the back so that, uh, you know, it didn't smudge or anything. I always take precautions. There you go. And so I made sure I did that before, yes, before I put down the inside because of the felt. And uh, here we go. You know what? I put it down and I had to take it up for a minute because the bottom wasn't even. Good that, yeah, I just touched it. Oh, get it up, get it up. <laughs> when this happens, it scares me. <laughs> but I did get it. Oh, yeah, I took my time. And there you have it, my friends. Thank you ever so much for your birthday. Wonderful comments. That, uh, wishing me a happy birthday. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. We hit over 16,000 subscribers this morning. I was so excited. Yes, thank you very much to each one of you. Hit the bell beside the subscribe button and then you'll be alerted when my tutorials come up. Alert, alert. <laughs> and have yourselves a blessed week and I will see you on the next tutorial. There's the, those luscious paints. I'll talk to you later, my friends. Take care.